Hey expats and travelers alike, today we're here to talk about expat life in Utrecht. We've broken it down into three parts, moving, living, and working. I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And this is our Review Preview Show. Finding big cities for expats that start with the letter U was a little tricky, but Utrecht ended up winning with 55% of your vote, so let's get started with moving there. Utrecht is a city in the Netherlands that is not as well known as Amsterdam or even The Hague, but it has a lot to offer. It's the fourth largest city in the Netherlands and has quite a variety for locals and expats. Many nationalities are represented here and it's been known to be a great place for working, studying, and even those with families. It's cosmopolitan and located right in the middle of the country. It's actually only about a 25 minute train ride from Amsterdam, so not too far from there if you want to visit. Since it's right in the middle of the country, it's well connected to other cities in the country and not so far from the neighboring countries of Belgium and Germany. Worried about transportation to and from the city? No problem. It's only about a 30 minute train ride to the airport and the train can get you in and out of the city and country easily through Utrecht Central. Why might you move here? A big draw is to study as the largest university, Utrecht University, is located here. There also are other big universities so you can move here to study. For sure. The city is picturesque with its many canals and old Dutch architecture. The city center has many cafes and restaurants along the water. Okay, so you're moving to Utrecht. What should be your number one priority at this point? Your visa. If you're an EU citizen, then you are free to work there in the Netherlands. But if you're not an EU citizen, then you will need a residence permit. If you're moving there with a the company, then they should help you with the paperwork. You need to register by making an appointment with your local municipality to get your BSN. This is like your ID number and allows you to get a phone, rent an apartment, and get health insurance. The city has become more and more popular, which can make housing a little tricky as it's actually going through a bit of a housing crisis due to the high demand. Mm. If you're a student, you can look for short-term accommodations. The other options are to either rent or buy, but give yourself plenty of time to find a place. Yeah, check out Utrecht, you'll see why it's so popular. Pet-friendly rentals are available, but since renting is so competitive, you might have a hard time finding a place. Again, like Kaylee said, give yourself plenty of time to find a place when you're choosing to rent. What part of the city should you move to? If money isn't a thing, then you can live right down in the beautiful city center in a canal house right on the water, but you'll have to pay for it. Here are a couple of other districts that aren't in the city center, but are located quite centrally. These districts still have that old Dutch feel. Mm, charming. Mm -hmm. This neighborhood is a bit cheaper and more multicultural. If you're looking for the Beverly Hills of Utrecht, then you'll want to move to this neighborhood but it's a bit pricey. Here are a few more neighborhoods that are outside of the city center. They're not swanky, but the price is a little more manageable. Check for housing near public transportation to make your commute easier, but it is quite common to ride a bike, so you might want to invest in one of those. A final note about housing for those of you that are thinking about buying. Remember, houses are in high demand, so it might be hard to find a house to buy, and of course, the prices are high. Expect to pay at least 300,000 euros and upwards from there. Happy house hunting as you prepare for your move. Now that we've prepared you to move to Utrecht, let's talk about living there. We talked a little bit about transportation to and from the city, but what about in the city? Bike riding is super common and the city is very bike friendly with plenty of bike lanes. There's no need to buy an expensive bike, but be sure to lock up your bike so that it doesn't get stolen. It's quite easy to get a secondhand bike for maybe 70 to 150 euros and just go ahead and embrace this bike culture, even if it might seem a little bit intimidating. There's a lot of bikes there. There isn't a metro, but there is trams and buses. You'll want to get yourself a UOV card. The cost depends on the distance, but expect to pay between 280 and 640 euros. We don't recommend buying a car as they can be expensive and gas is not cheap. Let's break down some other costs for you. We mentioned neighborhoods and the housing shortage, but what do prices look like for renting an apartment? A one bedroom apartment in the city center will be around 1200 euros and outside of the city center, it will drop to about 970 euros. A three bedroom apartment in the city center is around 2200 euros and moving out of the city center is around 1500 euros. Your basic utilities are around 200 euros and internet 35 euros. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant is around 17 euros, while a three-course meal for two at a mid-scale restaurant will cost you around 70 euros. Expect to pay about three euros for a cup of coffee and five euros for a beer. 
For those of you with kids, this is a very family-friendly city. Lots of options for schools. You can, of course, get into the Dutch schooling system, or you can choose an international school. But just like anywhere else, you will pay for it. Utrecht is highly rated with a good international school called Utrecht International, but expect to pay at least around 7,000 euros a year per kid. Yeah, a common question when living in a new city is, do I need to know the official language? The good news is that you don't need to be fluent in Dutch to live here as everyone speaks English, but they will definitely appreciate it. Knowing the basics is a nice gesture. There are loads of things to do in the city from museums and galleries to restaurants and cafes. Utrecht has a very rich medieval history, so you'll see that influence a lot in the museums. There are an array of festivals and sports. You've got a popping nightlife for those of you interested in that. For those of you with kids, there are things for them to do outside as well. Before we talk about working in Utrecht, we want to take a minute to give a few shout outs to those who are commenting on our review preview shows. We had three comments on our last review preview show about Toronto that we want to highlight here. The first one is from Sharon Weeks. She says, filled with a lot of useful information, housing is comparable to Maryland. Looking for a cheaper country, loving your alphabet content. Thanks, Sharon. That's what we're going for with the alphabet part. We're glad that you get it because a lot of people don't get it. <laughs> but uh, it's our 2020 thing, so thanks. Yeah. This next one is a request from Mahat Zara. OMG, new sub. Can you please make a video on how to find a cheap apartment or condo in Toronto, please? Thank you for subscribing. We love when new subscribers let us know and engage with us. While it would be cool to do a video on that, it's super niche for us and we would like to recommend a couple on YouTube based out of Toronto that are realtors. They're a small channel but they do really nice work so reaching out to them would help get you good information or possibly that video that you're looking for. The channel name is JNC Toronto and we'll put their channel link in the description section below. Finally, we had great dialogue with Pablo Caceres about the temperature in Toronto during the winter. He goes on and talks about how he loves the videos and then he gives some great information with the different temperatures, Fahrenheit and Celsius in the winter and how it's really cold and then also how it gets a little better during the day. Thanks again for showing some love and adding much detail and value to the comment section. To everyone watching this video that's interested in Toronto, finish this one first and then you can check out in the description that video. Yep. Those are the episode comments. Uh, we're about to touch on working in Utrecht. If you like city profiles like this one and want to help us grow and do more, hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, and fill that comment section up with positivity. Let's go. Finally, let's talk about working in Utrecht. There is quite a large expat community here, so that's good for job opportunities. Because of the university and education presence, there is a plethora of job availabilities in education. I love that word, plethora. <laughs> The service industry is also strong here, so you can look for jobs in restaurants, bars, and cafes. There are a few big companies headquartered here, so that opens up the door for those of you in banking and the financial sector as well. Here are a couple of big companies in the city that you might look for jobs in. Hmm. Another great opportunity is for those in engineering. Since the city is central, the railway is quite important, not just for the country, but also for getting to the neighboring countries as well. You also have startups, you have digital work, and gaming. It's a rapidly growing city with lots of options, so that means more opportunity for expats. The website Undutchables is a good place to start your job hunt. You can also go to the universities for job postings if you're interested in education. Mm -hmm. Remember that you need to obtain a work permit if you're a non-EU citizen. You can visit the Dutch Immigration Service website for up-to-date information. Remember, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up-to-date on what's happening in the world of expats everywhere. So on that note, let's quickly let you know what is happening in our world. Well, the biggest news going on for us right now is that we have just made it to Portugal. We've been vlogging about trying to move here for the past few months and everything has finally come together and we're here. You can check that playlist in the description below about our journey and then you can continue to watch us as we live our lives here. Yep. Now that we're here, we are shifting the focus from moving to Portugal to living in Portugal. So we want to show you guys how we're settling in and setting up things and then give you a glimpse into our lives abroad. We have a few expat interviews coming up as well, so be on the lookout for those as the expats talk about their lives abroad and then they give you the latest information on what's happening in a variety of different cities. And we are now moving on to the letter V, so if you're a subscriber, be sure to head over to the community tab page to vote for the next city.
Last chance, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button now. Remember, we post these every other Thursday. That's all for this review preview show. Until next time, bye. Bye.